Hey, I'm Bob Wormsley from Insidium, the makers of X Particles and Cycles 4D. And in this tutorial, we'll look at some of the new features which are part of the X Particles Early Access program. In this video, we're going to concentrate on the XP OpenVDB mesher. We're really excited about some of the fantastic improvements and new features to this generator. So, let's get started. The XP OpenVDB mesher can now take colour and velocity information from particles and create vertex maps. These can then be used for rendering and to apply post-motion blur. In this scene, we have particles which are being moved along the path of a spline with a spline flow object. These are being meshed by the XP OpenVDB mesher. To get the colour information from the particle, we need to check transfer point colour. By doing so, the mesher creates a colour vertex map. If we click on that, we can see that the particle colour has been translated to the mesh itself. We're able to smooth the transition between point colour with the smoothing iterations to make sure that it is nice and smooth. And now the particle colour is being transferred to this colour vertex map, which can then be accessed in your chosen renderer to be able to colour your mesh. Let's disable the point colour mode and look at velocity. So if we transfer velocity, the OpenVDB mesher creates four new vertex maps. The first is a colour vertex map, and this one translates the XYZ velocity information into RGB. And this too needs to be smoothed to ensure smooth transitions. And now this can be rendered as a separate pass and used in external compositing software to apply post-production motion blur. Alternatively, some compositors and renderers require separate XYZ vertex maps. And here we have them Z, Y and X. So the new XP OpenVDB mesher can now transfer point and particle colour and point and particle velocity. You can now adjust the point radius on a per object basis within the XP OpenVDB mesher. Let's demonstrate. In this scene, we have three pieces of geometry, a cube, an oil tank, and a sphere. And as you can see, there are differing numbers of polygons and points on each object. If we go to our XP OpenVDB mesher and drag in all of our objects as a source, and then we'll make the original objects invisible. So here we have our OpenVDB mesher and our objects are all in surface mode. So let's change this to points on each. And now each vertex of the object is being meshed based on the point radius value. And at the moment you can see that there are so few vertices on both the cube and the oil tank that the mesh isn't one uniform skin, uh, but it's wrapping around each vertex. So traditionally what we'd do to sort this out would be to increase the point radius globally until we had a mesh that no longer looked like separate points. The problem is there is no need to do this on our sphere because there are far more vertices. So now we're able to make these adjustments individually. So let's put our global point radius down to say 15. And now if we highlight my cube, I can go to the point radius and adjust the point radius only for the cube geometry. I'll put a point radius of four. On my oil tank, I can make a separate point radius adjustment, let's say three, and I'll leave my sphere as it is. Now I can go to the filtering tab and make some Gaussian filtering. So now I have a smoother mesh and I've been able to use the per object point radius. 
The XP OpenVDB mesher is now able to generate object IDs for every single source object. In this scene, we have four pieces of geometry which are in an XP OpenVDB mesher creating one unified mesh. If we want to isolate these in compositing software or in rendering, we're able to do that with the new object IDs. To activate it, you select a source in the sources window and click generate object ID. This creates a vertex map on the mesher. And here we can see that we've created a vertex map which highlights only the capsule. You can see that there is a rough edge and we're able to smooth that if necessary by using the object ID map smoothing iterations. Let's set that to say 15. And now we've smoothed off that edge. And now we're able in rendering or in compositing to isolate just the capsule part of this mesh. Every single object is able to have its own ID tag. Let's activate one for the sphere. We'll go to the sphere object, generate object ID, and now we have another map, which is just the sphere. Again, if necessary, we can increase the object ID map smoothing iterations to the same amount, to 15, and there we have the sphere. Let's do one more with the clone. With the cone, we'll generate object ID, which creates another vertex map and let's do some smoothing 15 and now we have that so now we're able to isolate the cone the sphere and the capsule so that is object IDs generated by the XP open VDB mesher for all source objects this scene features a cached XP fluid effect simulation of two emitters colliding, creating a water splash. If we pause it there, we can see that the two water globules have collided together. We can place both emitters inside an XP OpenVDB mesher to mesh the result. The mesher has an orange texture, and as you can see, obviously both emitted particles have the same colour. So, how can we separate those two emitter globules to give them a different colour each? Well, we can use the object IDs to do this. In the XP OpenVDB mesher, we can go down to the sources window, select one of the emitters, and check generate object ID. This will create a vertex map on the mesher, and if we highlight this vertex map, we can see that uh, the emitter in question, emitter 1, has been coloured with 100% weight. It is 100% uh, weight is yellow, and the other emitter is uh, zero weight, which is red. So we can now use this to um, mask out um, this uh, material, so we can give it a second. So here I have a blue material. If I place this on the mesher as well, everything turns blue because it overrides the one preceding it. But what I can do is go into the blue material and under the alpha channel, I can select a texture. And what we want to do is use the vertex map. So we'll go down to effects and vertex map, which gives us this. If we click on the button, we have the option to drag in a vertex map. So let's take our vertex map, which is our emitter ID, drop it in. And now you can see that that has been masked out. Now the edges of this ID are very, very jagged. So what we can do is we can smooth those out by using the object ID map smoothing iterations. Let's put it up to say five. And we can see we've smoothed out that edge nicely. So now what we have are two separately colored water globules colliding splashing out and joining each other but remaining separate in their colour. So that's another way of utilising the object IDs within the XP OpenVDB mesher. If you'd like to try out any of these new features, all you need to do is get involved with the XParticles Early Access programme. Full details on how you can do that are available on the Insidium website. So until next time, I'll see you later.